Good afternoon, or morning, or evening. Can't really tell with this type of thing. But hello to everyone. Today we're going to be looking at sketching sine and cosine curves with transformations. And I have a class of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. And we are moving on. So if you are seeing this and you're not in the room, you are responsible for learning this material from this video. Awesome. Moving forward. So given the functions y equals a sine k theta or the function y equals a cosine k theta. Now let's look at that for a minute. Let's make sure that we're absolutely clear. If this was a function in this form, so now it's not sine or cos, it's just some function named f of x. We're talking about an a on the outside and a k on the inside. Yes, I do understand we used to use a c. I get that. Deal with it. We use different constants and different forms of mathematics. It's okay. But we know that this is outside the function, so it's vertical. Vertical stretch or vertical compression. We know that this is inside the function, so it's horizontal. Horizontal stretch or horizontal compression. So now it's going to look like A sine K theta or A cosine K theta. And once again, this is going to give us changes in our amplitude and this is going to give us changes in our wavelength or period. Remember what we learned last day. We learned that the amplitude, which is a distance from a horizontal through the wavelength, it's a distance up and a distance down from an axis of symmetry, from a line of symmetry. So it's a, a displacement. It's a... Um, it's a length, so we only take the absolute value. So if it was negative 3, we wouldn't say the amplitude's negative 3. We'd say the amplitude is simply 3 units. Okay. And this k value, notice that that's going to change what we have going on for our period. Our period is normally 360 degrees for a normal sine or cosine curve. But if we stretch it or compress it, our period becomes 360 divided by k. If k happens to be a whole number like... 360 divided by 2, then that means that it's going to be a wavelength of 180 degrees. That's a horizontal compression, and it would have looked like this, sine 2 theta inside the function. If we had sine 1 half theta, then our period would be 360 divided by k. The k is 1 half. Invert and multiply, as we've done several times, we get 7 20. That means it's a horizontal stretch. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We're right here. So we figured this out. Now, something that's new that we haven't talked about is this idea of pi. Pi is going to represent 180 degrees. I haven't really explained it. We spent some time yesterday talking about it. So if I had pi divided by 2, that would be 90 degrees. If I had pi divided by 6, that would be 30 degrees. If I had pi divided by 4, that would be 90 divided by 2, which would be 45 degrees. Just working on this video right now, so we're going to keep moving through here, and we're going to see what we have. Okay, critical interval. Critical interval. Now remember, on any sine or cosine, we're going to have five critical points. So if you take your hand and think about five critical points, you got your thumb, then you got a finger, a finger, a finger, a finger, and we're going to pause at this point because someone wants to ask me a question. And so